What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking, ugh, losing all that, about weight cutting for fight sports. I want you to understand by the end of this episode what my preferred methods are for making weight and what methods I absolutely hate. The ones that are gonna drain you and make the fight the next day so much harder. So I just went through this situation, got my sauna suit, the pants, these things are spectacular. I just went through this a couple weeks ago, but obviously me being up here in a room that's like 20 degrees with this on feels like a cakewalk because let's be real, cutting weight, especially that last, whatever it is, one, two, maybe up to 10 pounds of water weight, that can be awful. And not utilizing the right method for yourself is gonna hurt you so much. And there's not one exact way that you have to go about making weight, and there's not one exact way that's gonna be perfect for everybody. There are so many different options, and a little bit of experimentation is ideal. So I'm gonna take you through pretty much all the different ways that I've tried to make weight and let you know exactly which one I like the best. And Let's bear in mind that I wish weight cutting was not involved in fight sports, but because it is, if you're not doing it, you are missing out on size advantage, or maybe not size advantage, but at least maxing out what you can be the following day. If you don't do it, other people are doing it, you're the one at a disadvantage. And if you guys like my sauna suit, you can actually head over to X Marshall. These guys supplied me with this one. I used it in my last two weight cuts. It works great. It is actually a little bit stylish too, and it doesn't really restrict my movement, which is really nice. So I'll have a link down below. You can go and find that there. Very reasonable price and very good quality. So the first thing that I want to let you know about is some misconceptions that happened a long time ago about making weight. One of the first things somebody told me when we were talking about dieting to make weight the last week, they said, all you can eat, and bear in mind, this was like 20 years ago when I was early in my fight career, all you can eat is spinach and peanut butter in that last week. And guess what? I did that. It was awful. Then bit by bit, you start to learn, wait, why would I do that? Like the UFC fighters a long time ago were doing it, unnecessary. Same thing with weight cutting. There are so many unnecessary things like heading to a sauna to cut seven pounds or something and just staying in there the whole time. I've heard guys like, oh yeah, I went into the sauna for two hours to cut seven pounds and you come out dizzy and ready to fall over. There's just so many foolish ways fighters used to do things that you don't need to do anymore. So let's start off and let's talk about the options for cutting weight. Number one, you put your sauna suit on and you head somewhere for a jog. You go and you actually mobilize the body, you get moving in one way or another, and you just start sweating. That's option number one. Option number two, as we just mentioned, is actually head to a sauna. You head to a sauna and you cut the weight in there. Option number three is get in a bath. Bath, really, really hot. When you get in there, you're gonna start sweating like crazy. You can get it done really fast. In my opinion, that's a fairly dangerous way to go about doing it, but we'll get into that a little bit more. And then in addition, now, instead of saunas, they actually have saunas, little portable ones that you can travel with. They keep your head out. So we're gonna call those head-free saunas for this episode. Those are the basic ways that you're gonna sweat off weight. Now I wanna to talk to you about my experience with each of them, and then we'll talk about what might work best for you. First off, going for a jog or getting on a bicycle or some form of activity. This is the method that I have used the most in my career because trying out the other ones, I found this to be the situation where I felt best. Yes, my body was feeling fairly weak, but I never got dizzy. I wasn't like, whoa, because my head is not overheating. I have my sauna suit on, I keep my toque on, until I go, oh, my head's starting to get really hot, and then I take it off. And I'm just going like, I don't even know what it'd be, five miles per hour on the treadmill, and you just run it off. That for me has been the method that I've used the most frequently. I like it. The one downside being you're trying to recover the day before you compete, and you're putting out extra energy, you're exerting your muscles, and you're not necessarily in a recovery stage, especially since you're calorie deprived. So even though that method will not work for some people or they don't prefer it, it's what I 
very often like to do, at least until very recently. And we'll get into that in a moment. Option number two, head to the sauna. I have never done this for a whole weight cut. I have used it at the end to shed off a pound or something, but I already know about myself. When I go in a sauna, when I just go for a leisure swim at the pool, being in there for more than 10 minutes without a bucket of water to pour on my head is awful. I hate it. My head starts getting so hot and I start getting a little bit dizzy and then nausea follows. If I were to go and do a sauna for an hour, I know I would not last. I know it would wreck me. So I have avoided it. I would not recommend this method for many people out there unless you're somebody who has already saunaed many times in the past and you know going in for an hour or half an hour is no problem for you. Option number three, which is the most severe but is very effective, is getting in a bath. Now let's first talk about temperatures. What temperature will you put a bath at? Normally, when you get in a bathtub, or a sauna, or so not a sauna, a hot tub at a public pool, 103 is a very hot temperature. You'll very often see 102 in a public pool, I believe. 103 is quite hot. When you hit 104, many people are gonna be like, ooh, ooh, that's hot, and they're not gonna stand for too long. I was watching something recently where some UFC fighters were talking about the temperature of the bath that they heated up to. 107 degrees. And when I was first told how to do this, it was basically make it as hot as you possibly can so that when you put your foot in, you try and leave it and you have to pull it out. And getting in is a slow process, in and out, in and out, eventually you get all the way in. And from there, you're gonna stay for about 10 minutes. Maybe take a little break in between, get back in for 10 minutes, you're gonna sweat so much. I have done this and the repercussions were terrible. Get out. I was so dizzy when I was sitting on the floor. I went to lean back. I lost, I guess, perception of what it, where everything was. And my head bounced off the floor. Didn't bounce. Clunked off the floor. I avoid this if I can. Long baths are terrible when you have a very high temperature. So that is the method which I really don't like. Now something you will note, which the UFC fighters are doing nowadays, if you were able to watch them, maybe in one of their YouTube videos, is they do a bit of everything. So one of the things that I like to do nowadays is I will start with a bath. And we're not talking 107 degrees, I'm just talking like 103, 104. I get in for five minutes. As Soon as I get out, I slap on the sauna suit. Generally, once I slap on the sauna suit, what I'm gonna be doing is going for a little run. But you don't have to do it that way. The alternative being nowadays that you could go and get in a sauna with your sauna suit on, or if you're lucky enough, you can get a portable sauna. Or, like I've used my last two fights, a sleeping bag sauna. It's on the ground. I actually have a link down below where you can go and purchase one of these. They are fantastic. Head is out, you can lay down, you don't have to sit up. This is from Hydra Gun. I've talked about their massage guns before, but now they have this amazing product. So I have one of these, I travel with it, my head stays out, so I'm able to get really hot in the initial bath, and then I go from the lay down sauna for five minutes, I pop out, I get up, and I just do some shadow boxing for five minutes. Then I get back in and I alternate back and forward. This cross of using different methods to cut weight for me has been ideal because just going for a run, you start to feel the fatigue. Just going in a sauna, your head is gonna get really hot. Going in a bath for like 20 minutes to half an hour, you just come out being like, whoa, you have no idea what's happening. So these portable saunas, are almost a godsend. And they just make cutting weight so much easier. If I had to narrow it down to which method is the worst, in my experience, I would say bath. No question. My brother also utilized the bath method for a couple fights and he hated it. Both of us got wrecked by it. We were all dizzy. We didn't perform as well the next day because of that bath. If I had to break it down and say which one is the best for you, I would say mix it. Try different methods, try probably bath first, and then maybe a sauna, and then maybe back in the bath or a sauna, or you could go bath, sauna, little workout, sauna, workout, whatever you feel is gonna be ideal for you based on your ability to deal with heat. Some people love hot baths and they can go for a long time. Some people hate the baths, but they do really well in the sauna. Be aware of what your body is capable of 
and then build your weight cuts off that. But please, the one thing I want you to take away from this is we don't need to do extremes. We do not need to cut weight on fight week with only peanut butter and spinach. Stupid idea. We don't need to get into a bath and lay in there for half an hour to cut seven pounds. Yeah, you'll cut the weight really fast, but you're gonna come out feeling like garbage. So if you can keep that in mind, be smart about your weight cuts, experiment, find out what works best for you. The way I have now found out what works best for me, it takes me about one hour to cut four pounds. I don't come out feeling dizzy. This is something which is gonna make a world of difference in your ability to perform the next day. So let's call it there. It's not incredibly hot today, but I'm already starting to sweat under this thing. This is how well these work. Just stand here talking and I already feel little drips of sweat starting to come down. So they're effective. And if you don't already have a sauna suit, we've got the link down below. You'll find one at X Marshall. It's not a sponsored episode. I just want to give a shout out to them because I found this to be a very nice sauna suit. So let's call it there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard, guys. Be safe on your weight cuts. And I will see you back here soon for another video.